Russia and China hackers uh, or backed hackers are exploiting WinRAR zero day bug. I think I even made a tweet about this and said, do people even use, wait, people use WinRAR still? Is anybody in chat using WinRAR? <laughs> because I'm like, wow, I didn't know people still used it. You use WinRAR? Why? Why do you use WinRAR still? Well, there's 7-zip, but there's sometimes, uh, I think all that got integrated directly into Windows now. Yeah, uh, I like pzip personally. That's my game. Nanazip. What's Nanazip? I, I don't think I've ever heard of that. pzip's one I use all the time. So pzip, this one's a really good one. So I've used that. It's, it's agnostic. You can use it on Linux, Windows, Mac. So pzip's always there. What's Nanazip? It's a derivative of 7-zip intended in the modern windows experience okay i like the layout a lot better than traditional seven zip seven zips layout's always been a little bit eh that's cool so they took a seven zip and just kind of made it pretty i kind of like that oh okay winrar has better encryption I, you know they do have some advanced options i know winrar does <laughs> yeah so I, I I can see it. There's some really neat things about WinRAR too. I, I want to say the encryption was interesting. There's it's been so long since I've messed with it because a lot of times I just use like XZ or something like that on a Linux terminal. I rarely zip things up, and when I do and I need a GUI, I've been using pzip. Uh, but uh, I might try out NanoZip. That's that's kind of cool. Is that even on? Uh, let's check WinGet. Search Nanozip. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can use that right here. M2 team. Win get install Nanozip. We'll just grab that real fast. I might add that to the utility as well. Why we're here. Oh, it's already in your utility. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, I did find this one thing about WinGit that I think is kind of interesting. Um, I did a big upgrade before starting the stream, and I updated all my stuff. I removed, obviously, Brave, switched to Thorium, because I haven't been on this Windows instance in a while. So I was like, okay, I need to update some stuff. And I did this WinGit upgrade in how Windows ha handles, like, CLI package managers and Windows is always a bit lackluster, especially compared to Linux. But I did find that there's some interesting things that happen, and I thought I'd share it with everybody whether you're upgrading all packages or whatever you're doing here, when you do a WinGit upgrade, it spits out all the packages that can be upgraded in your system. However, some of these packages, I already have, I think, 402 installed of .NET 7. But since the older versions are installed, it wants to still upgrade, even though 4.02 is in enabled. So it's kind of a bug in WinGit. Uh, as far as Python, I think that Python might be legit. We could look at it. Python launcher. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And Edge, I've screwed up Edge. I don't know how many times, so I'm sure that's my fault. Uh, and then Ear Trumpet always has problems with WinGet. I'm actually going to remove Ear Trumpet. It's actually, mm -hmm. I don't really use it much. And it always kind of hangs up in here. Is there no Ear Trumpet? Oh, there's no Ear Trumpet here. Well, that's okay. We'll just do a WinGet uninstall and do ear trumpet and we'll just remove that all right great so if we go win get upgrade let's see we should see ear trumpet out and let's look at if you do like appwiz.cpl this is another way to kind of detect let's go to the next one microsoft edge is that even there oh it is there huh hmm we could do something funny to remove that from uh, the remove programs. We, we'll come back to that one. Uh, Python launcher. Let's see what we have for it. Oh, there's two Python launchers. So it's probably this old version right there. Uninstall. Yes. And this one wants to update to three point. Ah. Okay, so that one's probably okay. We can probably push that one through or let it go. And then let's look at Microsoft.net. The, the reason why you kind of want to do this is one, to remove some of these old versions that are just sitting there bloating up your system. 
but um, they don't they aren't really doing anything. So we got 4.02. This is the latest. Here's the old one. So let's remove it on install. You might be thinking, why doesn't Microsoft do this when it upgrades? And to that, I have to say to you, it's Microsoft. That that's the reason. <laughs> uh, oh nope, Did it. let's go. All right, one more. But sometimes doing the, these pruning of old versions is good because you don't know. You, you let's say there was a security exploit in one of these old versions. It's kind of good to do this, and I'm kind of grateful that the win get upgrade command kind of just tells me, hey. You got these old packages, you might want to remove them because you already have the updated version. So usually I do an upgrade all and then kind of just look through and see, hey, what one is old? So uh, that's kind of how I do it. So we've done that. Uh, let's do a win get upgrade again, just to see. We still have Edge, Windows Terminal, and then Python. So you saw we've kind of done that. Let's see what that other one, what's include unknown. That might be a non winget package. Let's see what happens. It pulled in windyr stat. Okay. So let's install windyr stat and see if uh, I couldn't imagine me not installing it through winget. Huh. All right. I'm going to uninstall that. I don't really use windyr stat from Windows, but I could always see it is 1.2. It just didn't grab the proper eh whatever i'll leave it so there's the old one we've removed them all it, it doesn't do any harm for it uh one thing i do let's launch the tool after all that's done just do an upgrade all from this this puts in include unknown versions and also i, I want to say it grabs and installs um uh, it does a little bit better job. I can't remember the trigger. I had to look it up, and it was on the website that I looked that up on. Um, there we go. So that looks like it upgraded that. And if we do a win get upgrade again, just with no nothing, let's see what pulls up. Is, did it remove Python? Yeah. So now we just have Windows Terminal, for whatever reason that's getting hung up, and then Microsoft Edge, which, well, we've been trying to remove Edge for... For some time and sometimes there's just little remnants that get left behind another neat thing we can do here um actually i didn't mean to hit that again let's run the utility there is a revo uninstaller very cool program when it comes to basically tricking and removing things let's say we we we've pretty much removed edge and i think i have in this system does edge play yeah, yeah. So I've removed Edge. It's just the shortcuts and stuff are there. So you can use Revo and Installer to do some really fun stuff. A uh, very powerful tool. I think it's partial shareware. I can't remember exactly. But let's say you have something where it's just not uninstalling or something stuck in your menu and you're just like, it's annoying you. This happened to me, I think, with Epic Launcher because I had it on a, a drive, but the drive letter changed. Well, that's going to screw up all your uninstallers, right? So let's look at Microsoft Edge. That'd be a great one to look at because it's pretty much ripped out of the system. And let's see if it can be in here. Microsoft Edge. Did I scroll past it? Where are you at, Edge? Oh, maybe, maybe it doesn't show. Here, let's do a search. Edge. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't show in here. Anywho, uh, we could look at... Uh, Let's just say image class, for instance. There's a really neat look up here. You can open the registry key and then change, let's say image class was installed and moved from drive C to drive D, and now you need to update the uninstaller. You can actually fix the install location and the source if you know there was temporary files left over and these got moved either way. They're all just right here in this. this is a great tool to look up registry keys and fix on installers if you ever run into those problems. I've had that happen on occasion and it's nice not having to uninstall everything and being able to kind of fix some installers. So a really good one. Well, that's kind of my, my guide to upgrading, installing, and just kind of keeping a good system that doesn't have old you know old versions of like python or something in there that's not good let's say you don't want to get exploited by having that running in the background 
So you remove all those old versions, all those old frameworks and that type of thing that you no longer need because you have the newer one in. It's good to go back and kind of clean these things up. And Win gets great at that. So I kind of like getting this uh, set up. And if we do a Win install of Microsoft Terminal, let's see. This is an interesting. Some of the Microsoft tools really hate WinGit for whatever reason. All right. It says it's done. Restart the application to complete the upgrade. So I probably just needed to restart it. And now we should just see Edge. Boom. So our system's 100% up to date. And that's that's my methods to updating and kind of securing Windows. It's kind of funny. A lot of security people in the Windows realm they just end up installing a whole bunch of crap and then you got to update all that crap. And if you don't, then you just become vulnerable. And that's the most maddening thing about Windows users. A lot of times they'll they'll think, okay, I'm secure now that I've put all this stuff on. And I'm like, yeah, you're secure for a little bit, but that stuff's going to go out of date. There's going to be exploits for it. Make sure you're updating your programs. Not necessarily the system. The system has quality updates that I recommend but feature updates can be just as detrimental to your health in Windows as that. But that's a whole different rant.